here we are backstage at Creamfields with Above and Beyond. They are playing at the Cream stage. Guys, you just have finished your acoustic tour. Would you like to tell us with just some words how this acoustic tour went? Well, it was an incredible team effort and I think it, out of anything that we've ever done it felt most like a huge team effort and it wasn't just you know our band uh, it was all, all of our support crew and it was also the people coming to the shows and I think one of the things that we were most surprised with was how people were bringing their parents and their kids to the show so it was almost like a sort of family outing and a lot of our hardcore fans were able to bring in people who might not normally come to you know Creamfields or one of our other shows and um, and really share the music together so that that felt like an, an amazing thing for us to do and hopefully one day we'll get to do it again uh, do you believe that you have won a different audience you have won different audiences through these acoustic shows some people that maybe don't go to festivals uh, absolutely but the, the way that it happens I, mean, I think when we when we did the first one there was this I think we were still kind of clinging, clinging to kind of an old-fashioned music business idea that you know a record that's very different from what you do somehow goes out and magically creates its own audience and really what happens is it's our existing fans who, who have acoustic and they play it to people who they've been banging on about above and beyond for years who've never been to a, a late night you know rave or never been to a, a money festival or maybe they're too old or too young to come to one of those shows and acoustic allows them to say come along and see this band that i've been going on about for five or ten years and, and see what the fuss is about and the the audiences as parvo said people were bringing their mums and dads and grands and grandmas and kids and um it really was a very special very special atmosphere are we going to see the video recording of this are you going to release it soon yeah we've just been working on <coughs> putting the finishing touches to the concert film of hollywood bowl because we recorded our gig there um and then we've also uh we're in the works of making a documentary film about oh, the whole project wonderful. so so um yeah, we are going to see all the backstage yeah 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 uh, backstage. you have done a wonderful uh, remix that has been promoted and i think is released also on moby on porcelain yeah how this came about well i think they were you know moby's team were getting a lot of uh, remixes of moby's classic tracks and i think they're releasing an album yeah it's called 20 and, 20 yeah. years of uh, moby yeah and uh, as part of that they asked us you know to to remix one of moby's and porcelain is one of our all-time favorites um so it was just, just a true honor to to be able to be remixing that are we going to see any new material from you soon any new singles except yeah we're hoping mixes? to we've got abgt um 200 coming up uh in a month's time and we're going to try and get some stuff finished for that um there's two or three instrumentals and maybe a, a vocal track that are kind of uh, candidates for, for finishing for ABGT 200 so we'll either be one or two or three new above and beyond productions in that set. How did you feel when this event again sold out so quickly and so early it's like if you have the chance to make five shows at Zico Dome I think people will follow you and will go come again. Well it almost feels like um, it feels so amazing that people put their trust in us <clears throat> but also it comes with the huge responsibility and the pressure of delivering I remember when, when we sold out the Madison Square Garden, it was one of those ones where we we're like, uh, uh, oh my God, you know, what are we going to do now? Like, these people are going to come and they're going to expect to see an amazing show. And then for, for years we've been, you know, thinking, oh, if we, if we had the budget, you know, we could do this thing with the lights or we could have this screen or whatever. It, that was probably the first time where it was like, okay, boys, just give us a show. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you're faced with the whole terrifying reality that, you know, what are you actually going to do? But it's really made us ask a lot of hard questions about the show. Uh, you know, what, do we, what are we trying to create? And I think every time we push ourselves through these things like ABGT 200, we learn something from it and uh, we become better as a team. Yeah. So, uh, do you have wait. a favorite Creamfields moment? This is the last question. We are uh, at Creamfields. Every time we, we, we did the main stage last year, and that was really good. But actually, when we've done gigs here in the tent before, the atmosphere has been. I mean, if you could put it in a bottle and sell it, it would sell for a very high price. <laughs> price. It's been the atmosphere has always been incredible here. So I can't remember, you know, any specific like one minute, but, but you know, my memory of Greenfields is always a very, very positive and, and joyous one. Thank you.
thank you very much guys uh, wishes for a wonderful set tonight we thank will you. be there at the forefront